This app, this app, and this app were all built without writing a single line of code themselves. But what if I told you that you could build your own $10,000 app in just a few hours using AI? And to prove it, I'm going to build an app together with you, specifically for this video. First, we'll come up with a viral app idea. Then, we'll use Mobbin to legally replicate the designs of some of most famous apps in the industry. After that, we'll structure our app and use Cursor AI to build it. We'll use Superbase for the database and backend, and we'll set up DeepSeek's API as the main feature of our app. Finally, I'll show you how to upload your app to both the App Store and Google Play Store. I've never seen anybody else show the entire process of building apps with AI here on YouTube, so this video is the only video you will need to get started. Step 1. How to actually find a viral app idea. This is by far the most important step, and finding a viral app idea is all about solving a real problem in a simple way. But to do this, your idea must meet these three criteria. Once you understand these, you'll start seeing opportunities everywhere. So first of all, you need to identify a common problem. Find a problem that is extremely frustrating or emotional, because people download apps to solve their pain points. And remember to always write down your app ideas immediately when you come up with them, because if you don't, you'll just forget them. And once you have an idea, you can actually chat with ChatGPT and ask him if he thinks the idea is good or not. Point number two, keep the app simple. Your app's core functionality should be able to be explained in three words or less. Here is a video of Blake Anderson explaining this very well. You should be able to describe the unique nature of your app in three words. Riz GPT, respond to girls. Umax, face analysis. Cal-AI, photo calorie counter. It really is that simple. And the last criteria to find a viral app idea is to make it shareable. Your app should be so helpful to the pain point that the users just have to share it. So here's the app I'm building in this video. After working 20-hour days, I realized how unproductive multitasking actually is. Distractions like emails constantly break my focus, which means I'm no longer in a flow of deep work. So that's why I'm creating this all-in-one productivity tool that helps you sort and prioritize tasks. Two, deep work on one task at a time. And three, chat with an AI to easily add tasks from the Chat. Now the next step is to find viral app designs that we can legally replicate. And we're going to use Mobbin, which also happened to be the sponsor of this video. So right now I'm in Mobbin, and what you're seeing is literally a gold mine of 100,000 plus screenshots from apps like Duolingo, Spotify, Netflix, and a lot more. And here's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to steal their proven designs and user experience and let Cursor AI turn them into code for us. Because there is literally no reason to try to reinvent the wheel when we have access to proven app flows from big companies. This is exactly what we need. Now pay attention, because this is the exact process I use to find the designs for my apps. Click on the search bar and go to App Categories. Here, you can choose the category that best fits your app. Since I'm creating a productivity app, I'll select that category. Now, from all these designs, I'm going to pick one that best fits my app idea. And I think this one is the perfect choice. And we're not just going to admire these designs. We are actually going to steal them, but of course, not in a shady way. So now let's click the Copy button in the bottom right to grab the entire flow of the app. Then, if we click the download plugin button, it will take us over to Figma, where we can open a new file and click on run. And now, if we click inside this box and press Control V, it will paste the entire flow of the app in Figma. And then we can clean up our Figma file by deleting all the pages we're not going to use. All right, so now we're going to do something super important that is going to save you hours of frustration later on. We need to create what I call the brain of our app. And this part is absolutely crucial. I've literally wasted weeks of work by skipping this step before. Next, Next, we'll structure the base of the app. Cursor uses powerful AI models like GPT-4 and Claude, which are incredibly efficient workers, but they need clear instructions to perform at their best. Without a well-defined plan for the app, they'll start making decisions on their own. So here's what we need to do. We're going to create two important files that will guide Cursor AI step-by-step, -step, and I'll be using ChatGPT to help with this process. Let's start by creating the first and most important file, which is the context file. This file will explain everything about our app to the AI. Here's how you can create it. Open ChatGPT and write down all your thoughts about how the app should work. Be as detailed and clear as possible. Consider the entire flow of the app from the moment it's opened to the very end, just as I've done here. Once you've written everything, you can ask ChatGPT to organize it and make it more structured so it's easier for the AI to understand. I'll leave the prompt I just wrote in the description of the video so you can just rewrite it for your own app and then just copy the context here. Okay, so let's start building the app using Cursor AI. Now if you haven't downloaded Cursor yet, head over to cursor.com real quick 
quick and grab it. It's completely free, and they even give you a two-week trial of the Pro version if you want to try it out. Open cursor and open the folder for your project. I've already created one and named it DeepWork AI. Inside that, create another folder called Docs. Then create a new file called context.md. If we now press Control L, this opens up Cursor's AI chat, which is like chat GPT, but way better because it can actually see your project files by simply tagging them. So now paste in the context we got from chat GPT and ask him to write this better for a markdown file and then press apply to add it in the context file. Then just quickly go through the file to make sure it includes what you want. Example like I did here. I just want the sign in to be with email and I know how much time it can take to figure out the right text stack. That's why I've left the exact one I use in the description so you can just copy it exactly as it is because I've already gone through all that pain so you don't have to. Then just paste it in the context file as well. So now let's write this in the cursor interface. Give me the full database schema and the optimal folder structure of the app and add this in the context file. Then, and this is super important, tag your context file by typing at and selecting files by pressing enter and then select the file. This tells cursor AI to use your context file as reference. And now just add the text to your context.md file. Open your terminal and type this command, npx create expo app at latest dash e with router. Then give your project a name. I'll call mine DeepWork AI. When it's done loading, let's drag the docs folder we created right into our new project folder. Then type cd and your project name to navigate into its folder. If you now type ls, you will see your current file location. So let's run the app, write npx expo start and it will initialize the app. Then you'll see a QR code pop up. So just grab your phone, download the Expo Go app, and scan this code in your phone camera. And just like that, your app is running on your phone. I know it looks pretty basic right now, but isn't it fun to see it working? Let's keep going. Now press Control i to open the Cursor Composer. And the Composer is the feature where it writes code for you just by writing in plain English. So let's ask it to build the app step by step by focusing on one task at a time, and then tag the context file. Now he just made the development plan, which the AI will use to know exactly what to build. So now let's ask him to start with the first task. Press accept and let's press R in the terminal to reload the app. So, I'll just copy the installation command and press Control shift backtick to open a new terminal. Then use ls to list files and then let's again use cd to open the project folder. And here we'll execute the command to install the required UI library. When it's done installing, head back to the terminal which is hosting the app. Click inside the terminal and press R to reload the app on your phone. Alright, now let's continue building the app. Just write continue in the composer. Now he will set up the configuration with Supabase for the database and authentication. So when he is done, let's accept and head over to Supabase.com. Quickly make an account and then let's create a new project. I'll call it DeepWork AI. Now copy the public anonymous token, head back to cursor and navigate to the .env file. Remember to keep this token private. And in this file, we'll need to paste in the token in the anon key. Then go back to Supabase and copy the URL and paste this in the URL as well. If we now write continue in the composer one more time, he will continue building building the login and sign up pages. So let's accept and click inside the terminal and press R to reload the app. And the same as before, when you have an error, copy it, paste it in the composer and prompt him to fix it. So we need to install a library. Just copy the command and head back to the other terminal, paste it in and run it there. When it's done, head back to the terminal that is running the app and press R. Nice. Now this is how the app is looking. We've set up the entire user authentication flow with both sign in and sign up pages. And since we use Supabase, it even sends out a verification email. So so, if we now log out and try to log into the account we just made, you'll see it works as well. And if we go to Supabase now, under authentication and users, we can see the account I just made in the app. So, I spent the last 30 minutes continuing to build the app, and this is what it looks like right now. We can create new tasks, give it a title, set the priority of the task, give it a description, and set a deadline for when the task should be done. And now, if we click on the task, we can start the focus timer, which then counts how much time you've spent on this specific task, and we can also mark it as complete. As you can see, the the app does not look good yet. So now, let's improve the UI. Head back to Mobbin and let's go through the designs we want to use for our app. When you find pages you'd like to take inspiration from, press Ctrl C to copy them, head back to Cursor and paste in the pictures in the Composer chat, and continue doing this for all the inspiration pages. When you're done, let's ask the Composer this. Use these pictures as inspiration for my app design in the entire, and then let's tag the code base. This will have Cursor look through the entire project. And when it's done, click Accept. And now let's have a look at the 
app again. Wow, just like that, the app looks 100 times better. By simply copying an app that's already invested a ton of money in optimizing their design and user flow. If you want to use Mobin yourself, I put the link to their website in the description. Now for setting up the AI chat using DeepSeek API, let's write this in the cursor composer. Build the AI chat feature from at developmentplan.md. Nice. Now just accept it, and let's navigate over to the env file. Now we need to copy the DeepSeek API key placeholders here into the env file. And then we need the DeepSeek API key from platform.deepseek.com and paste it here in the env file. And remember, if you are confused about anything, you can just ask the cursor chat. You open it by pressing Control L. Now let's reload the app again by pressing R in the terminal and let's check out if it works. Here we can see the new AI chat. And if I now write, I need to buy a new toothbrush and tidy my bedroom. And submit. Great. The AI feature adds tasks on the first try. So now for the moment you've all been waiting for. To be able to upload this app on both iOS and Android, we need to do this. And I'll show this quickly for you. Let's ask the cursor chat. How do I upload my Expo app to App Store and Play Store? And keep in mind you need to buy an Apple developer account for $99 annually and a Google Play developer account for $25 one-time fee. Then, let's open a new terminal and type in the command npm install g e e s k l i which stands for Expo Application Services. And when it's done installing, type in es login. This will ask us for your username and password, so head to your web browser and search for expo.dev. Quickly create an account and then head back to Cursor, where we'll log in with the same username and password we just created on expo.dev. Perfect. Now let's run this command ease build colon configure, then press Y to continue, and select all if you want to upload the app to both iOS and Android. If we now head back to expo.dev, you'll see that the project is now connected, and I've turned this entire video into an article on my website if you want it written down, so you can find the link in the description below.